What is Israel doing to Palestine considered a genocide? I don't believe it's a genocide. Ye yes, I believe it is. 60% of the people killed have been civilians. Gaza doesn't have its own access to its own electricity. <coughs> it gets water or food. It can get turned off by Israel. When you occupy people and take their right of self-determination, they will resist. Yes. No one's going to live their whole <laughs> life, be born and die in a prison camp where 700,000 Palestinians were displaced from their homes. 700, and never 000. allowed to go back to their land. This is a clear human rights violation. Things like this is not a single incident. We've seen it again and again and again and again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hamad Chowdhury's Debates. I've got a very powerful debate today. On the left, we have a representative of Palestine and on the right, a representative of the Jewish state of Israel. My question to them today is, is what is Israel doing to Palestine considered a genocide? Yes or no? I don't believe it's a genocide. Ye yes, I believe it is. <laughs> and it falls under the genocide prevention um, clause of 1948. How is it a genocide though? Um, when we look at genocide, we have to first define what a genocide is. And when we do that, we have to look at the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide in 1948, which defines genocide as acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethical, racial or religious group by A, killing <coughs> members of the group, B, causing serious body harm or mental harm to members of the group, C, deliberately inflicting conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, and D, imposing measures intended to prevent birth within the group, and E, forcefully transferring children of the group to another group. All three of the International Criminal Court rulings, Geneva Conventions of 1949, and Elements of Genocide, Rome Institute of the ICC, define genocide as this, and they all follow these definitions. What do you have to say to that? So my answer is, um, this is just reading from the American Jewish Committee. Israel is not committing genocide. Israel is not committing genocide. The destruction of any nation, racial, eth ethnic or religious group. Israel is seeking the destruction of Hamas, a terror group that states its intent to destroy the state of Israel it, in its founding charter. Israel's campaign in Gaza is an act of self-defense and the Jewish state goes to great lengths to prevent civilian casualties. Um, you can read more about this in basis claims here. So I, I, th I think that basically sums up the general gist of where the Jewish side is kind of coming from. Well, I'll get you both to, to, to speak on that and, and come in and have a back and forth about the discussion. Again, there is a lot of confusion about it. On, on, one, on one end, you're saying it's not a genocide and you're saying it is genocide given the specific definitions of what defines genocide, how, how do you think you could have a rebuttal to what he just said? Well, first, when we look at genocide, we have to look at the actual definition of genocide with any unbiased view, which is the Geneva Conventions, the Institute of Rome, the ICC, they all define genocide, and that's what we use for ruling of genocide. Mm -hmm. Yes, of, co of course, of yeah. course. 100%, um, <coughs> they need to defend themselves for <coughs> the civilians that were killed on October 7. Any civilian casualty on any side is horrific. It should not happen. Mm -hmm. Goes for both sides. Yes. But the disproportionality of death before and after October 7 has been something that all human rights organizations have called upon again and again and again, because it has been extremely disproportionate. The amount of civilians killed based on combatant members of Hamas for the last 20 years, this has been very disproportionate. Even what we see right now in Gaza is very disproportionate. 60% of the people killed have been civilians, at least 60%. And that's what we can clarify on the documentation and identifications of the people we have. Does that include men, women, children? 60% is mean women and children, okay. so they're not combatants and at they have, all. They have nothing to do no, whatsoever. According to the IDF estimate, 17,000 of the 42,000 that have been killed are Hamas members. The rest are civilians. That means there is, uh, for every single one Hamas terrorist that has been killed, two civilians have been killed. Do you think that's justified though? <laughs> do you think it's justified that if you're killing if you're going after an organization that threatens the sovereignty of your own nation, it's fair to kill 
two innocent people for every one bad person you kill? Apparently, according to, I, I watched the Tom, Sp um, the Sam Harris podcast, and there was a data analyst by the name of Tom Spencer who said <coughs> that when it comes to the world average, for every single one militant that gets killed, four civilians get killed. But when it comes to urban warfare, for before every single one militant gets killed, four civilians get killed. But when it comes to urban warfare, <coughs> for every single one militant that gets killed, nine civilians get killed. Is this uh, pertaining to the Israel and Palestine conflict or globally? Globally. This is globally. So if for every single one civilian gets killed, what one terrorist gets killed, two civilians get killed. That's actually way below the um, world average. Now, um, I say this, uh, <coughs> I watched, uh, um, there was the Tom, I think it was a, a data analyst by the name of Tom Spencer went on the Sam Harris podcast and went for one hour and 30 minutes and he was talking about this. But just the other night, just the other night, I actually listened to a podcast by the name of Adar Weinreb, an Israeli guy, and he was like saying, yeah, these, uh, these ratios that they're a little bit misleading and he was actually rebutting these arguments that I'm just making to you right now. So yeah. I'm never a hundred percent certain yeah. what to believe. According to the Palestinian narrative, there is this overall idea that it's all Israel's fault. All the wars are Israel's fault. The main reason why there isn't any peace agreements is Israel's fault. The main reason why the Palestinians suffer is Israel's fault. Uh, quote by Noam Chomsky, all the wars are Israel's fault. And I remember hearing that in 2006. <coughs> <coughs> and it's a quote that stuck with me for such a long time because, not because I agree with it, but because I felt, wow, that is like one of the most counter-narrative things that I was taught at school. We were always taught that whenever Israel goes to war, it does so in the name of self-defense. And now I'm hearing this guy saying, well, in actual fact, the whole story isn't true. Israel's the aggressor. But ultimately, at the end of the day, particularly when it comes to politics, it gets to a point that you can go so far um, <clears throat> down the rabbit hole, it does get to a point where it's like, okay, I'm not, you can drive yourself crazy trying to figure out what actually is and isn't true. There's a uh, famous story. <coughs> it sounds like you're concerned about the information that you're getting, whether you can validate it's true or not. Yeah. Um, so th you know, there's two points that came up. You said, you know, for every one per terrorist that gets killed, two civilians die, and then you're going into your concern of the validity of information. W would you have any points to, to, to talk about that? Well, the first thing is first, um, under international law, occupied territories, you cannot defend yourself on occupied territories. What, is that, wait, wait, what, is that, what does that mean? So I, 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 if there's I, 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 a territory I, 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 that has controlled and does not have its own sovereign everything, Gaza and the West Bank. <coughs> Gaza doesn't have its own access to its own electricity. It gets water or food. It can get turned off by Israel. That institutes full blockade, a full violation of international law, because that's a complete occupied territory. That means they're not allowed to self-defense in occupied territories. No, well, well, yes, but so you're saying <laughs> I'm not saying that the International Court of Justice yeah. is saying. Yeah, but it, it, it would make sense. So you're saying that when it comes to the settlements in the West Bank, Israel doesn't have a right to self-defending, to defend those settlements in the West Bank. But when it comes to Israel inside its own 67 borders, all human rights organizations recognize oh. that the state of Israel has a right to exist within the 67 borders. So therefore, it does have a right to defend those borders. Now, it's a little bit of a tricky situation because anything outside of the 1967 borders is Gaza and the West Bank. Exactly, that's what I mean. So all of it's occupied territory. But not, not, yeah, law. but not within the 67 borders. That's not yeah, occupied. That, that I'm not that's about. not occupied. So Gaza's right? not occupied and West Bank's not <laughs> occupied by Israel. <laughs> no, well, it, Israel's... Uh... Can Israel control the food, the water, the power supply in Gaza Strip? Yes. Then it's occupied. Yeah. The, the, the West Bank, look, I'm, I'm a Jewish person, yeah. and throughout my entire life, I've been vehemently opposed to Israel's occupation and yep. building settlements in the West Bank. Yeah. I'm, I'm vehemently opposed and to it. And that's where the root of the problem comes from, though, the occupation. That's why there's resistance and rebellion. When you occupy people and take their right of self-determination, they will resist. Yeah. No one's going to live their whole <laughs> life, be born, and die in a prison camp. 
Yes, but answer me this question. Yeah. In 1964, the Palestinian Liberation Organization was established in 1964. That's three years before Israel stepped foot into Gaza and the West Bank. <coughs> so what were they trying to liberate? It's not just about the occupation of Gaza and the West Bank. It's, you know, there's a quote, it's not about, it's not about 1967, it's about 1947. Yep. For many Palestinians, and I've spoken to them, it's not just about Israel's occupation of Gaza, West Bank and East Jerusalem, it's about what happened in the Nakba in 1948. Yeah, which is um, another cause of the problem, where 700,000 Palestinians were displaced from their home. 700,000? never allowed to go back to their land. What are you saying? 700,000? Where did they 700, go? 700,000 into Gaza. Yeah, okay. That's why the population of Gaza skyrocketed in that time. Because <laughs> they were all displaced. They're refugees in their own land. By who? Were they By just... Israel. Yeah. For By the forming factor of Israel. For what reason? Okay. To so, give uh, well, okay. place for Israel to have a land. Oh. Okay. So 700,000. So according to the Palestinian narrative, 700,000 Palestinians were ethnically cleansed from their homes as a result of a campaign of ethnic cleansing by the Jewish forces and it's called Operation Plan D. Now, there's a, a bit of a, uh, a disagreement. Over, there's a few things here, though. Uh, first of all, Plan D, according to the Palestinian narrative, was a campaign of ethnic cleansing by the Jewish forces. According to the Israeli version of events, it was a campaign of trying to conquer as much territory for the newly trying founded... Trying to what, sorry? Conquer no. as much territory okay. for the newly founded state of Israel as much as possible. It wasn't about ethnic cleansing. <coughs> does it... Does <coughs> it anymore? Like, regardless of their reason, the 700,000 people were displaced. Isn't that like cleansing still? Like, you, aren't you the intentions might not be okay. horrendous at that time, but it was still ethnic cleansing. Oh, so the intention wasn't to... They wanted to make place for the Israeli... Okay. Israel state of Israel. Okay, so it wasn't... then the, they used that opportunity to, get, to gain more land than was given to them. So it wasn't a direct attack on the palace, even though it was a direct attack around there, but it wasn't too, like, actually, you know... Uh, no, a actually, it is. external forces yeah. were trying to justify it. Yeah, but um, the thing, though, is, um, according to the Palestinian narrative, they say all the wars are Israel's fault. In the 1948 war, this is a very classic pro-Israel talking point, Israel accepted... In 1947, there was a petition plan. Israel agreed that... Israel, the Jewish 30% of the population would get 55, agreed to uh, the petition plan. 55% of the land was going to go to the Jewish side and 45% of the land was going to go to the Palestinian side. But um, <coughs> when it comes to the, uh, <coughs> the populations, 30% of the Jews, 30% of the population, which were the Jewish people, were going to get 55% of the land and 70% of the um, Arab population. land was going to go to the Arab population and Edward Said felt that it was an unfair deal. So there's, there's a lot of things to think and, I, and I've, I've heard so many variations like, uh, you know, Mustafa Barghouti saying, oh, the, the Jewish people, they never accepted the petition plan, this is Zionist propaganda. Like, I don't know what the hell to believe anymore. But um, <coughs> the Israeli side will say they accepted the petition plan, the Palestinians rejected the petition plan, and the Palestinians started the war by attacking a few, two buses. So you've probably uh, heard this story. They actually started the war. And then we had to defend ourselves and then they lost. So there's a big argument and debate over who started the war, whose yeah, fault yeah. it was for the war. And maybe Just if they accepted the petition that, plan. Though, before yeah. the war began, there was a terrorist attack that led to that war beginning. Do you agree on that? Uh, the Zionist but, terrorist attack. The uh, first ever terrorist <laughs> attack in modern history in the it, Middle well, East. Th this was the um, bombing of the yep. King David Hotel. Yes. <coughs> when, <coughs> not, 90, 92, uh, people, 92 people were killed, including four Jews. Yes, yes. Uh, that's and including UK. That was the first terrorist act. 1946. Which, the first which dispelled, first dis dispelled the ideology that they are here for peace. When someone commits a terrorist attack where innocent people, including their own people, are killed. Four Jews, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But so George, Gal the George Galloway, the George Galloway says it's 17 Jews. I don't know where he got that. Yeah. Even we go with the lower number. One is too many, like we said. They're <laughs> civilians. They should not be killed for some ex extremist justification.
Yeah. Look, so, um, so it, I, I, it is, I believe is it, it is a terrorist attack. Look, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, there, was a, there was a quote by Netanyahu, you know, there's a big difference between freedom fighting and terrorism, and uh, some of the right-wing people, they call it... Uh, freedom fighting. Uh, fr freedom fun. Yep. But um, a lot of uh, liberal Jewish people yep. and a lot of liberal pro-Israel Jewish people do acknowledge that the bombing of the King David Hotel was a terrorist attack, yeah. and I believe it was a terrorist yeah. attack. Okay, so then let's come back to the main question. It, is what Israel is currently doing in Palestine <coughs> considered genocide? We've got both definitions from your end. Um, we've, we, we've identified that, okay, there's various points that determine what genocide is. We're, are you swaying towards the direction that it, it is? No, uh, <coughs> I'm swaying towards the direction that it's not. Again, so we've got the ratio argument. <coughs> uh, In the ratio argument, though, you use IDF numbers now, which have which hasn't been independently verified, and they, which, and which, they I will, will, which I which I will and acknowledge. I think, that haven't been I think we have to verified. give the IDF spokespeople and their numbers very big scrutiny because recently, just very recently, in the last two days, we saw IDF spokesperson come out and say that Hin Rajab was not murdered by IDF. 355 tank bullets. Hamas don't have tanks. They're not allowed tanks. Unless Israel would give them tanks, which I don't think they would. Where did those bullets come from? <laughs> and now they have satellite imagery. Save the Children and Amnesty International got satellite imagery of when it happened. 15 minutes. They have identified IDF people in the area, tanks, and the IDF spokesperson still comes out and says they were not there. Again, so when it comes to the Hind Rijab story, I'm still yet to do more research into it. Yeah. I, I was listening to a Save podcast. Save the Children Amnesty yeah, I, I, a very I, good report on it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I was actually listening to uh, Amy Goodman, you know, the War, War and Peace report, you know, yeah. Democracy Now. I, I, I was actually hearing just yeah. last night, yeah, 350 bullets were tank found. Bullets. Tank bullets. Tank bullets, only, they, tank bullets were found in this thing, like what the hell's going yeah. on here. And then we also have to look at that, that <laughs> attack when it happened. The original mm. car with Hind Rajab and her family were in was attacked. And then she, then she called, called the, the, the Red Cross Crescent aid to come help them. They parlayed the information with the IDF that they were going to that route to pick them up. Mm -hmm. The first fleet got attacked, they hit by IDF. The second fleet that went in to get them got attacked and killed. Mm -hmm. Both of them, IDF knew they were coming, <coughs> they had talked to them. This is a clear human rights violation. Things like this is not a single incident. We've seen it again and again and again and again since October 7th and pre-October 7th. I have multiple instances before October 7th where there's massacres, UN hospitals being bombed, schools being bombed by Israel. Well, the, there was actually a report um, earlier, uh, just at the beginning of the war, where uh, it, it was claimed that Israel bombed a, a Gazan hospital, <coughs> so the Al Hilal Hospital, yep. uh, and five and it was reported five hundred Palestinians had been killed. But what turned out, what and that, that's what the Palestinians were saying. And uh, if you there I, is video footage of this attack. Okay, yeah. So, so this is the first time. I think was it just in October, it was in November. But anyway, what Israeli media reported it that an a wayward uh, Islamic Jihad rocket was misfired and hit the parking lot next to the hospital, and it wasn't 500 Palestinians that was killed, it was 10 to 50 to maybe 100, again, I've heard so many different numbers, were killed. So this this is a story where the Palestinians were lying and a uh, mm. wayward rocket uh, actually hit the parking lot. That's not true, we have video footage of it. You can but, see the whole video footage. Israel is not that far up from Gaza, you know this, right? Yes, where they fire the rockets. There's video footage of people, the f rocket going from Israel ran landing there. You can see it go up and down. This, this information is available on YouTube? Yes. Yeah, the, it's the, available <coughs> widely in public. And also, uh, the uh, kind uh, of uh, rocket no, that was destroyed huh? was not the one that Hamas used. Huh? The type of rocket that was destroyed was not one that Hamas used. And then, even the hospital accusations, they constantly but, lie about it. Like at Al Shifa Hospital, where they had the list of terrorists found underground. Half of the world reads and understands Arabic. That list was the doctors' names and their timetables. They justify this as being Hamas terrorists for attacking a hospital. Yeah, I, the, the, it's, the, the, we they need independent reporters to get in there and understand 
and give real journalism. <coughs> we cannot trust IDF because they've lied again and again and again. They, there's also... And also human rights organizations, Amnesty International, Save the Children, Human Rights Watch, all agree that Hamas numbers, their political side, not their combatant side, it's a completely different side, are accurate within 92% and have been for the last 18 years.